Hey everybody, this is Simon Sage from iMore. We are at E3 2013, checking out for the first time Plants vs. Zombies 2, coming exclusively to iOS at launch. Uh, and we've got one of the folks from EA here who's going to walk us through it. How's it going, man? It's going very well, thanks for asking. So uh, what's new in Plants vs. Zombies 2? Well, there are a lot of new things in Plants vs. Zombies 2. The first thing I would say is the, the, tra the time travel theme this time around is very new. So rather than sort of a series of levels that take you to different parts of your house, your backyard, your front yard, your roof, now you're traveling through time with Crazy Dave and his time travel machine to visit different historical periods and face off with zombies from those periods. So you start off in ancient Egypt, you work your way through that, you get to a sort of 16th century pirate world, then you work your way through that, you get yourself to um, a... Uh, Wild West cowboy sort of scenario, so you've got cowboy zombies, um, and along the way, you're going to earn a lot of new plants, unlock a lot of new plants while you're facing all these new zombies, and we've got a couple of very specific new uh, features in the game. One is plant food. So if you think about the original Plants vs. Zombies, there were upgrades to certain plants. You could go from the pea shooter to the repeater, or the gatling pea. You could go from the melon pulp to the winter melon pulp. In Plants vs. Zombies 2, we've replaced that to an extent with a food system where you feed the plants plant food and it sort of supercharges them temporarily. So every plant effectively has an upgraded mode that is temporary. So let's take a, a quick look, give you an example of a level in ancient Egypt. Uh, first I'll close in on the Right. The other thing we've done is try to make the maps more sort of navigable. So you're not just following this linear path. You have choices. You can go down branching paths to unlock new plants. Or you can skip that for a while and try to stay on the main path and get to the next world as quickly as possible. So it gives the player more options. So first I'm going to pick my plants for this level. I'll pick mostly new ones just to show your viewers some of the new stuff in the game. How many, how many new plants total are, are going to be in this one? There will be uh, at least a couple dozen. I'm not sure the exact number, but a couple dozen new plants and several dozen new zombies. And largely they're themed to the world where you first encounter them. So the plant food is shown down here at the bottom. This is your plant food sort of receptacle. I haven't earned any plant food yet. But when I face off with a glowing green zombie, that's a sign that that zombie is carrying plant food. And as soon as I take that zombie out, I will get some of that plant food. We've got some tombstones in the way there, too. That's, that's kind of similar to the old version, right? Yes, although they are slightly different. In the original, the tombstones were largely about spawning new zombies. In Plants vs. Zombies 2, the tombstones are more of an obstacle to some of the projectile plants. Some plants can catapult right over like the cabbage pole. He could fire over the tombstones, but a lot of plants can't. The other thing that's very new about Plants vs. Zombies 2 are these touchscreen power-ups. So in addition to being able to power up every plant by feeding it plant food, I can actually use this to actually touch the, the zombies and interact with them directly. So each of these represents one. There are three ways for me to sort of reach out and touch a zombie directly. So if I use this one, it has an effect similar to the lightning read. I can actually zap the zombies or even the tombstones for a, for a brief period of time. So are, are those just on cooldown? How, how do you pick those? Those are, on, those are not on cooldown. You can select them any time, but they do cost coins. You earn those coins through gameplay, or you can buy more coins. So it's important to note that another significant difference between this and the original game is this is a free-to-play game. Now, what we've done is made every level and every zombie absolutely free. You'll never have to pay to face off against any new zombie or to get to any level. There's very, very little premium content that you have to buy, or that you can only buy, I should say. The stuff that you can only purchase isn't even, they're not things that you need to proceed through the game. It's a handful, four or five plants that are premium plants, and in fact, they're all plants from the original Plants vs. Zombies. So, all the new plants, all the new zombies, in fact, every zombie, you will encounter without paying a dime. Excellent, excellent. 
So let's try out a couple of the new ones. We've got the Bloomerang going there. He's one of my favorites. He does sort of double damage because after his Boomerang pedals hit a zombie, they come back and hit that zombie again. So you kind of get double your money on those. Um, the Snapdragon is a fire-breathing plant. He covers three rows. And you'll notice that the zombies have new abilities too, right? This is the raw zombie. And he is... Uh, his sort of staff, his magic staff, will uh, absorb your sons. He does give them back once you take him out. I've gotten a little distracted here talking to you, so I'm going to lose a, <laughs> I'm gonna lose a lawnmower here. But, hey, that's what they're for. We've got a little more plant food there. So let's try powering up a plant. So let's do the bonk choy, and then we'll power him up. And now he fires in every direction with super powerful punches. One of my favorites to put the plant food on is the iceberg lettuce plant. If you just plant the iceberg lettuce and one zombie steps on it, it will freeze that one zombie. But if you put it, if you power it up with plant food, it freezes every zombie on the screen for about 10 seconds. Do we have any, uh, any new game modes here? I mean, th this is more or less the same kind of gameplay we've seen, but I remember that there were a couple of really great, uh, you know, like the, uh, the zombie bowling from the original. It was, was a lot of fun. Anything new on this front? Yes, there are mini games off some of the branching paths. Um, let me see if I can find one of those for you. And we're going to be adding more of those over time. It's really important to note that at launch, this game is going to have about 60 levels. They'll all be new. They'll be populated primarily with totally new zombies, totally new plants to fight them with. We're going to be adding more worlds, and each of those worlds are going to have branching paths with additional uh, new plants, new zombies. So let's see if we can find one of those challenges. I think it's this one. I gotta admit, I'm not totally familiar. That they're they're a little hard to identify. They don't just call themselves out. This is one in the sense that you don't plant. I wanted to show you the one where it's more of a concentration-like game, but this is a a sort of challenge where you're just served up plants. You don't get to pick. You don't have to collect suns to plant them. There was a similar mini game in the original, um, and it was a fan favorite. So we kept this one around, and in this case you're literally just being sort of served up certain plants by conveyor belt. The good news is, again, we've put a lot of variability in there. So the next time you play this level, it's not going to be the same. And all of the levels have multiple challenge modes to them. So if you've played a level before, and you want to go back and play it again, it will be different. There will be some twist to it, like don't plant beyond this line. Don't use more than 15 plants on the whole level. Don't spend more than 2,000 suns on the level. Those kinds of, they're not too difficult, at least at the beginning. They get progressively more challenging. But they add a nice twist if you should decide to go back and play a level again. It's, the, the guarantee we make is it's not going to be the same as the last time you played it. And we know that people love to play these levels over and over. And we get a lot of customer feedback from people who say, I'm still playing the original four years later, you know, and there's a certain amount of variability there, but boy, if you could make it even more random, that'd be great. So that's really what we've tried to do here. It's looking awesome. So uh, we got a lot of new plants, a lot of new mechanics there with, uh, with the plant food. Uh, new consumables, free-to-play model. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff going on here. When's it coming out? Uh, it's going to launch in late July. It'll be an iOS exclusive initially, and then we'll bring it to other platforms. Awesome. Well, definitely looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. Thank you.